Hey everyone, welcome back to The Current. Uh, so glad that you're here today. My name is Bo, I'm joined with Curtis. As always, we are going to discuss some fun topics. Um, subtitle of our podcast is Real Talk on Real Topics. Mm. We're making our way through our series here, um, going through the Apostles' Creed, which yes. is just this foundational document, for those of you that may not know, of like the Christian faith. It's one that... Um, for example, like we have on our church website, just kind of the core beliefs of what we believe. There's a bunch of secondary issues. I think the church kind of gets, you know, and fights over, but this is like the core stuff, like through time, through history, this is what Christians have believed. And this is kind of what makes the Christian faith. So we're working our way through this. And today we're going to wrap it up. There's, uh, several just kind of small topics yeah. kind of, or, I don't know if that's the best way to put it. The creed definitely just spits them out in a row here at the yeah, very end. Yeah, just yeah. kind of some... So we'll just work our way through these piece by piece, and it's been a fun series. I've really enjoyed this one. It has been, and I think I love this series because there are so many people who just aren't familiar with the Apostles' Creed whatsoever, and I do think, like you said, it's so important, not only just for Christians in general, but just our, our heritage, our faith. Um, and so I think everybody that calls themselves Christian could do well just being a little bit more familiar with these creeds and with these teachings. Yeah. So I know, uh, put you on the spot a little bit here. I know that our, at our church, we do like a step one class mm -hmm. and there's a book on the yes. Apostles Creed. So I thought maybe you could share just a little bit about that book. If people maybe wanted to order that or pick it up, or I guess they could even swing by here. We, I think we have some copies, but yeah, yeah that, I don't that, know if you want to talk just a little bit about that book just briefly. Before we jump in. Yeah, I'd love to. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, so we teach a, a nine-week class here going through the Apostles' Creed. We call it the Step 1 class because it's kind of like, hey, this is your first step. If you're looking to become acquainted with Christianity, the Creed's a great kind of first impression. Um, and so the book that we work through is fantastic. It's a small little book. I mean, if, if you're watching on screen, it's like small. If you're not watching on screen, you could hold it. It's like the size of your hand almost. Um, and it's by a guy named Ben Myers, and okay. he's awesome. He's a theologian. I want to say, I cannot think of now if it's either in Australia or the UK, one of those two. Okay. Um, he's overseas. A uh, fantastic guy. It's just called um, the Apostles' Creed. It's part of a core belief series, so they have a bunch of just kind of core Christian belief things. And so Ben Myers is the one that takes us through the Apostles' Creed. He's fantastic. He's an expert, um, not only in medieval Christianity, but in a lot of the patristic, really early stuff where this comes from. So uh, a great guy if you're looking for a guide through the Creed. So Ben Myers, the Apostles' Creed. Look that up on Amazon. You'll find it. Yeah, cool. Well, let's jump in and start tackling the last few here. No so, kidding. Where are we at? We talked last week. We talked about what? Last week we got to Jesus was um, ascended uh, into heaven. He sits yep, at the right, right hand of the Father. Judge the living and the dead. Yes, there he's come to judge the living and the yeah. dead. Good. Yep. Um, yeah. So now we kind of <clears throat> transition from sort of the Jesus story. We were kind of moving through that. Hey, he was born, suffered under Pilate. He was crucified, died. He's ascended. He's going to come back. Um, now the creed's going to shift and kind of just give us a few little theological things to chew on. And like I said, they kind of spit them out at us right in a way, uh, right in a row, excuse me. Um, so it just starts to come off the cuff with a lot of belief statements. I believe in this, I believe in this, I believe in this. Um, so the first one that it transitions to is I believe in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, so this is something we've already talked about a little bit early yeah. on in this creed. Um, we talked kind of about the Trinity. There's a space for the Father, there's the Son, and there's the Spirit. Um, I guess just to circle back, I'd encourage people to go listen to that episode, mm -hmm. um, but to circle back and maybe say just a couple things about the Spirit. Um, I know for me, and this is something where when it comes to the Spirit, we can leave Him out altogether and we can overemphasize Him. It's something we talk about a lot yeah, here. Sure. Um, and so I love just the idea of trying to find that right balance and saying, hey, um, the creed brings them up multiple times. You know, the spirit is intentionally in there a lot. And so I love that. Hey, we talked about him. We circle back. It almost gives me an excuse to tell Christians, don't forget about the spirit. Yeah. We can forget about him so easily. So um, just finding a place in our theology and our Christian living for the spirit, even though it makes us a bit uncomfortable, yeah. we don't know what we want to do with him. You know, the, the wind blows where it wants. So does the spirit. <laughs> um, we still need him. He's an important part of the Christian life. So I guess I just want to circle back around and say, hey, we can't leave the spirit out of what we do in our faith. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, like like I said, when, even when I was in college, we just I just preached on the Holy Spirit not too long ago, but mm. one of the books that I read was Forgotten God by Francis Chan. And essentially, mm. he's just getting at the heart of, you know, this idea that, that 
the Holy Spirit is forgotten. You hear a lot about Jesus, the Son. You hear a lot about God, the Father. But where is the Holy Spirit in our in our teachings? And I love that you you said that that the creed then comes back around, mentions mm-hmm. it again, saying, "Hey, don't forget about the Spirit." Um, yeah. yeah, it's such a practical guide in our life. Exactly. So. So if you have forgotten about the Spirit, go back around and listen to the first couple episodes, <laughs> and you'll learn some really great stuff. Um, it's sure. an important part of the Christian life. And so uh, a member of the Trinity worth highlighting. <laughs> yeah. So then the creed continues and gets into the, I believe, in the Holy Catholic Church. That's right. So, yep. um, yeah, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And then these next two kind of go together. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I believe oh yeah, I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Catholic, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. saints. Yep. Um, so now this gets away from the Spirit, and now we're talking about kind of church and Christian sort of relations and fellowship. Yep. Um, that's a very churchy word, fellowship. <laughs> um, but now we're, yeah, we're transitioning over and talking about the Catholic Church. Now here's the part where all the Protestants go, hold Catholic. up. Yeah, what do you mean? So all the Catholic Church is the true church. They bar- believed it from the beginning. Um, that's not what's going on here. Uh when we're talking about Catholic or Catholicity, that word just means like universal yep. or worldwide. Um, so the Roman Catholic Church kind of co-opted this term. So now we kind of have the big C Catholic. That's like the Roman, Roman Catholic. Catholic yep. And then you have like little C Catholic, just meaning universal. So um, what the creed's trying to safeguard here is to say, look, um, we believe in not just these kind of little local bodies of believers. No, what we believe is that there is one universal church. There is one um, uh, connected people of God who are, um, you know, empowered by the Spirit, united to Christ by faith. Um, so it really is a, a an attempt to say, hey, look, we are bigger than just our local church. We yeah. believe that there is interconnectedness throughout all all of what's going on here. Um, and so for me, I love this line because it constantly calls me outside of my little local context. Um, it's really easy. You know, we, we show up where we're working at Rhythm Church. We're thinking about rhythm people doing rhythm things all the time. Um, and it can be easy to forget, well, hold on. God's doing all sorts of stuff all over the world, all over our city even at churches that, you know, aren't Rhythm Church. Um, exactly. And that's just a good thing to keep in mind, I think, and remember. We can become a bit too exclusive sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And I think, you know, again, for far too long, I think the church has operated in silos. They yeah. kind of just do their own thing. And yeah. it, it almost kind of becomes a competition between churches. And, and I wanted to share this. I was looking this up on our website because we have a quote on here and I didn't want to butcher it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but talking about just unity and celebrating unity. And so let me find it here. But um, yeah, the the church needs to to do a better job of working together. And mm-hmm. again... It's just one of those things where we so often have more in common than we realize. You know? Yes. Like we, we, we take the small things and like blow it up and like, oh, well, we can never like partner with them or encourage them because they believe this, this, this. And it's like, seriously, come on. You know? Yeah. I think we are too quick sometimes to divide. We're too quick sometimes to say, hey, nope, now we're, we're kind of separated and you're not part of our team. And I think it's good to say, hey, look, we can have distinctives. We have some differences, but it doesn't make us different. We're all still Christians. We're all still kind of at the same goal. Now, I know kind of my Bible college days, there was a time even where like, hey, the only thing worse than being an atheist was if you were a Catholic. Like <laughs> <laughs> those are the people that are even further gone. They've yeah. like sold out, you know, oh my gosh, embraced yeah. a false gospel. And I think I love, again, the creed not only talking about Catholic church, but it gives us kind of a bar for Catholicity too. Mm-hmm. I love that whether you walk into a Catholic church or an Anglican church or a Presbyterian church or a Baptist church or a lot of these things, you're going to see people confessing this creed. You're exactly. going to see people who are uh, affirming this creed. And yeah. so I love that. Hey, whether, yeah, you're a low church Protestant like myself or you're someone that's a, a lifelong practicing Catholic, we have this creed that does tie us together in some ways, which I yeah. think is awesome. Yeah. And so, okay, I found it. But um, if you go to like our website and you click on like what we believe, mm. it has the Apostles' Creed, like yep. word for word, it's kind of what we're working through. But right above it, there's this quote from, I guess it's Rupertus Maldinius. I don't know how to say his name, but I love it. It says, in the essentials, we need unity. In the essentials, like the creed, mm-hmm. we need unity. In the non-essentials, we need freedom. But in all things, we need love. Uh, I love it so much. Such a great quote. Just 
talking about how like yes in the essentials we need unity there's room for yeah you know some flexibility on some of the non-essentials right yeah but more than that we just need love and, yeah and that's like kind of what i feel is that the church sometimes lacks is just genuine love for other churches or other i mean they're still at the root of it there's still people who are trying their best to yes make a difference for the kingdom of god and yeah yeah i think as maybe you'll have this experience but for some reason, it was kind of impressed upon me growing up. Like, I grew up in this small Baptist church, and I kind of had the feeling that, like, we were the only really, like, quote-unquote, saved people around. Yeah. Um, you know, Catholics were out of the question, for sure. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you didn't even waste your time. The Lutherans and them, it's like, oh, so close. But, you know, um, and it's funny. Like, my, my mindset has almost shifted the opposite way, where I, I see so much of a bigger pocket that I'm— there are definitely things where I'm like, okay, yeah, we've we've kind of left creedal territory. We're going off, and some of the things we have, I think that should be essential. Um, but more often than not, I'm I'm I find myself, like you said, realizing we have so much more in common yeah. than we do. It separates us. Sometimes what separates us, <clears throat> excuse me, is worth dividing over. But I think by and large, a lot of times, no. I think I want to say, hey, this is a slightly different expression of what God's doing here. Um, but I want to partner with that. I want to see what's going on in our you know our city our country i want to be able to say hey yeah um god's moving everywhere not yeah. just at rhythm church or not just in the that's baptist right. churches yeah and it's, you know I, I love the creed's language like communion of the saints it's mm. like we're we're just united together and i think there's some like practical things i would just encourage people in regards to this idea like i know especially you know here at rhythm we're so open-handed with people and like they're you know wherever they feel led to worship mm. totally cool with us it doesn't have to be here in fact we often will say there's a lot of great churches in town like go find one that best fits for you and you know but with that i think there's also this kind of idea that people think that well i can just kind of go wherever and shop around i don't need to communicate ah. kind of what i'm <laughs> what i'm feeling but like let us know like just like say hey like here's what i'm feeling we will like just so just like pray for you and be like absolutely it's awesome like go for it yeah but it's kind of like the like at least if you're not communicating it's kind of one of those things where it's like, exactly. You know. I, I think that you know churches all over Main City are fantastic and are doing great things, and you can be a part of it and and thrive and grow in your faith. Um, but I still think, yeah, as Christians, we should be connected to a local body, just kind of yeah. be our primary place. And so, if you have that, but you're thinking, oh, hey, yeah, I'm gonna kind of head this way. Um, yeah, I think it's always. Well, I say that not to like you know. It's more about like I don't want people to think like there's some type of like reason like we'd be mad. Exactly. You know? Like that's why I say it. Like just like please like let us know. Let like, us know. Yeah. Like we are not gonna be upset with you. Yeah. Whatsoever. In fact, we'll be really excited for you. Yeah. Like, following what God wants. And I feel like that's life. just the mark of a of a healthy church or healthy leadership too to say like hey we're not so insecure that we're like oh you like them more than us and uh, we go like pout in the corner but to yeah. say like hey no we understand um yeah, yeah. there's there's beautiful, good, godly things that are happening sure. there. And, and I would say on the flip side, if you're at a church and feel like you're being led elsewhere or like you're more comfortable in another spot and the leadership is not receptive of that or they're, um, I don't know, you're really fearful to like have, I mean, there might be some issues there too. And yeah, I think that's a big piece. Like you're saying, like I think it speaks out of leadership whenever they say, again, they're very open-handed. It's like, this isn't a competition. You yeah. Know? It's yeah. not, it's not something where like, obviously we're not in the market of like, stealing sheep ah se, yes <laughs> you know but i don't think other churches are either and so again we're yeah. all on the same team um yeah we're all part of the holy catholic church absolutely that's good it's in the remember. creed it's in the creed <laughs> oh right. gosh what's next the creed keeps going let's see uh uh holy catholic church the community of saints all right um we're getting real close now we're heating up uh and this is what i think most people when they're moving towards christianity this is what they want to hear about um we get to the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Um, so starting with just the forgiveness of sins. I love this. The creed, and we've, this has come up again and again, that it is, um, it, it lays good groundwork. It gives us something to latch on to and keep us sturdy, but also there is that kind of flexibility. It doesn't get too specific. Mm -hmm. um, and so the creed captures here that the Christian faith is a message about also forgiveness of sins. And mm -hmm. While I think we spend a lot of time at Rhythm saying, hey, that's not the only thing. That's not the only thing. And we want to expand it and help people see that there's more going on in the Christian message than just, hey, you're forgiven. Um, it still is here, though, at the very least. Yeah. Forgiveness is a component of the Christian faith. And it's something that we need to hear that 
there's good news that holds out that, hey, there is forgiveness to be found for our shortcomings, for our sinfulness. We know that we've messed it up in a myriad of ways. And um, the creed wants to let us know and solidify and say that in Christ there is there's forgiveness of sins, yep. and that's really good news. Yep. I had a meeting this week with a gal who really reached out because she's just interested in faith. Hmm. And it was so cool because she said that she is wanting faith because of the Christians she knows in her life. And cool. she's seen just their life and the difference that they have. Mm-hmm. Like, like just their, their life's just different. Like she just noticed something about them that she's yeah. like, I just, I want it. Like she's like, so cool. But that's one of the things she, she said, like she just feels like at the end of the day, like her life is just not good enough. Like she, mm. like she kind of feels this just, I'm kind of falling short, you know, yeah. in so many ways. And it's so great to be able to just look her in the eyes and say, well, in Christ, like it, you've been forgiven. There's literally nothing you can do to make him love you anymore. Mm. There's nothing you can do to make him love you any less. Like you are completely forgiven in Jesus. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing. You yeah. Know, to think that like at the core of what we believe, like there's this God who looks at us and says, you know, I forgive you for, the things you've done or haven't done or whatever it may be, the ways you fall short. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's so good just to, to hear and know, um, forgiveness is such an, a a powerful, um, thing when you're on the, both on the giving and the receiving end of it, you know, there is sort of, I think of a release and a freedom that comes along with forgiving someone as uh, someone that's been wronged. But I also think, yeah, we all know again what it's like to just be like, I've just messed up. Mm -hmm. Um, and to know like, yeah, we have a God that, that offers forgiveness that doesn't, you know, first Corinthians 13 love keeps no record of wrongs. That sort of, sort of scandalous grace. Um, and, and I love that. I don't know. Again, that, that changes people's lives. I have, I have something I tell people sometimes like, Hey, if you want to, if you want to turn the world upside down, go, so go love someone who doesn't deserve it. Yep. Like that changes lives. That changes people. Um, sure. and so to hear, yeah, at the message we have here is we have a God that, that radically forgives. Um, that's potent. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, we really try to do a good job of keeping the balance of saying like, hey, like salvation or, you know, what God is providing us is more than just like this transaction. It's more than just like, you know, forgiving a debt, you know, like where I think a lot of times like the gospel message is presented that way. We're like, Mm -hmm. hey, it's just this transaction that occurred. Like Jesus took your place. Like you owed him a bunch and then Jesus took your place. And it's boiled down to like this kind of, I don't know, like it loses some of the here's here's what I'll say to that real quick. I feel as if sometimes, yeah, we, we put the Christian message and its primary place is like the, the courtroom, like the yeah. law court kind of metaphor. Like, you're bad. You were going to be sentenced. The judge, like, Jesus comes in and, and like, takes the punishment and gets you off yeah. or, or whatever that looks like. I, when we have it just as that, yeah, we kind of shrink it down and it just comes about like, hey, I just needed to get forgiven. I just needed to get to heaven. I just needed to be a clean slate. Um but I think where the New Testament wants to bring the bigger metaphor, and I think that's helpful, is the metaphor of like um, marriage or, or covenant mm. in that God is looking to um, have relationship and marriage with his people. And so obviously in healthy, good, beautiful marriage, forgiveness is a component of it for yep. sure. Like we need to be good at forgiving our um, spouses, our loved ones. That's a part of it. Um but we wouldn't say, hey, that's the only thing about being married. I'm just, you know, there's so much more that's looking to be accomplished, a fullness of life, some experiences. Um, God's not interested in just forgiving us. He's interested in um, um, being in relationship with us. And so forgiveness is a component of that. Yeah. Um, but the New Testament isn't just trying to say, hey, God's forgiven you. But um, God has not only forgiven you, but wants you to be participating in um yeah, the church, his bride, what he's yeah. looking to do. And, and that leads us to the very next sentence. And that's why it's not just one. It's not just the forgiveness, but then there's also the resurrection. Exactly. You know, so. so we we get, let's just keep moving on. We get forgiveness of sins, um, but we have the resurrection of the body. And uh, for the longest time, when I first read the creed, this was the line that blew my mind the most. And that might sound <laughs> strange, but there was a time... the body. Exactly, yeah. I, I just, I grew up in a place, and we've talked about this before too, where sort of the afterlife and, and the thought of what Christian's kind of ultimate, um, you know, end was going to be was floating around in the harps. We've talked about that. Yeah. And so it blew me away that here we have a document in the first, you know, couple centuries of the formation of the Christian church and right there it says, hey, we believe in the resurrection of the body. And I was like, 
it's been like this for how did no one tell me like this is in our creeds this is like what people <laughs> a bunch of christians all over every sunday are going to confess this together it talks about the resurrection of the body how did i go 12 15 18 years as a christian and never hear about this mm. blew my mind um so this just gives me another opportunity to say i love the fact that at the end of the day i'm not hoping that i get to die and then like float around in a disembodied state forever I'm excited to say that, hey, this creation that God made is good, it's right, it's given itself to decay, but God's too good to let that be the end. Um, yeah. Wants to go and restore it, make it imperishable, just like our resurrected bodies, um, and we get to live here as it was supposed to be. God wasn't like, hey, here's plan A, I forget it, plan B. It was like, here's plan A, we're going to bring this back around. Yeah. We're going to get to plan A again. Exactly. Um, we just got to take the long route. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And if you read like the full narrative of the scriptures, that's really at the heart of what God is doing is like, mm. it was perfect. And then sin into the world, it gets messed up yep. and tries to fix it and through these people and they just keep going in this vicious cycle, you know, they keep yep. continuing to fall short and he's like, okay, well, you know, I'll send Jesus. I'll jump in here. Yeah. yeah I got Eventually. You but again, that's the heart of like the, the, the whole of scripture is just like this, this idea of redemption, getting it back to yes. how things are we're supposed to be yeah. and yeah there's a lot of to me that's so much more hopeful and like i think uh, i mean a great book is like surprised by hope I think. oh yeah yeah, like yeah. MT, right like yeah it really gets at this heart of like you know um just really like what is the hope of the christian life and it's so much more beautiful when you think about it in a physical sense oh like, yeah you know it's not my, my faith isn't you know the great hope of my faith is not like this like you mentioned like this disembodied like just kind of float around in the clouds forever but it's rooted in a very physical mm. enjoyable palatable way the resurrection of my body like it's very yeah. physical and jesus himself appeared physically you know to two people and that's yeah i don't know this to me it's just so much more hopeful it's yeah. easier to hope in that than like what oftentimes <laughs> Pie in the sky. Hope, hope for. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can think of conversations I had with friends around the time I kind of had this shift in thinking. And, and I remember just talking to him and looking outside and saying, it's just so, I, I don't know, it, it, it brings me more joy or I feel like I can get behind it a bit more now that I, I look out the window and I say, it's not that I'm saying goodbye to all this and yeah. forget it, but rather like, no, we have a God who's saying, I'm not letting this fall apart and decay right. so much so that i'm going to invade this space yep. we're going to do work here we're going to we're going to realign heaven and earth together i'm not giving up on it um and so yeah it's just a i think a more beautiful picture for me for some reason um yeah bodies are good god wanted an embodied physical existence um he knew what he was doing and i think that's how it's going to continue into eternity which leads us that's to the right. next thing yeah. exactly. <laughs> so not only do we have forgiveness yep. of sins and along with the forgiveness of sins comes the resurrection of our bodies but along with that not only is it just a resurrection um, but it's a it's a life everlasting yep. um, and this is a big thing in the New Testament talking about eternal life that you know those who believe in him will not perish but will have eternal life um, there is a message and we've talked about this before where again ultimately death and destruction don't get the last word because we've i think the language of james you know um you know we sin and sin when fully grown brings about death as we've kind of separated ourselves from the the giver the sustainer of life as we push away from that we end up in a state of decay ultimately which ends in death and so um i think jesus is the great undoing of this and now we have an answer historically to physical death um and that now death doesn't get the the final word it doesn't stamp us out but we get to live for eternity so this sounds a bit crazy and we've had conversations where it's tough to wrap our mind around what it looks like to yeah, live it's kind forever. of scary to think about eternity it's like eh, am i really going to enjoy that yeah for <laughs> you know, forever <laughs> never um, ending yeah <laughs> we don't have any conception of this you know it's yeah. hard for us as finite creatures to be like what is eternity um i trust <laughs> that it is good that obviously yeah. it's better than not um existing that it seems that this is what um, was the intended plan from the beginning yeah. and so any sort of eternal life for me is going to be eternally good you know yeah, there's true. there's no existence in which i'm like ah, this is kind of blase um you know this is a. Uh, uh, everything as it was supposed to be it's just like all the little stuff in your heart where you're like i just yeah. wish it's like all that gets to align and feel right yeah i think we kind of get glimpses of it maybe like mm. there's moments when like i don't know like i'm 
interacting with my wife and I think like, how could I ever exist without you or yeah. like, like my kids or like, you know, I get like kind of those tugs of like what love mm. really is. And like, how can I exist without this? Like, how could I ever exist without like, whatever it is in life? Like yeah. whatever it's like the, the best parts of life. And you feel mm -hmm. that little, like this mm -hmm. tug of like, man, like life would suck if this didn't, if this wasn't in my life, like it would just be terrible, yeah. you know? And I think that's like, you get a kind of a, it's a, just a slight glimpse of like, you're, well, you don't have to exist without those things, you know, like you, you, you'll have an opportunity like, yeah. like that, that feeling of like, mm -hmm. whatever it may be like, Oh, I just don't, Oh, my life never ends. You know, like I have those moments where I'm like, I could just do this forever. Like whatever it is, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, there's, I, there's a lot of moments in my life where I feel that way. And I'm like, you know what? Like maybe that's going to be more about what, you know, heaven is like, you know, yeah. like it's just experiencing the fullness of what it means to be, to be human. And yes, yeah, I don't know. We get to experience life to its fullness as it was intended yeah. to be. And I think we kind of have this desire that we say, yeah, something's amiss, something's lacking, something's not quite dialed in right about this life. Um, yeah. Either we say, hey, it's random chaos, every, you know, the, the universe is indifferent, who cares, it's not really doing anything. Or we say, yeah, there's there's some intent here, and that intent's not right. And, and I love, I almost want to work this backwards a little bit. Um, one of the things I've heard about talking about God is this idea of an argument from desire. And it talks about like, hey, we as creatures, we have desires. And there is something that always naturally satisfies or meets that desire we have inside mm -hmm. us. Like I have a, a desire and need for, for hunger, or for food. There exists something to satisfy that. Ducks have an innate longing to sit and float on water. There exists such a thing for them to do this. Um, <laughs> And so I think this argument from desire, what does it mean that we have something longing inside mm -hmm. us for something more for significance and meaning and purpose and, and love? Um, and I want to say, yeah, there, there exists something that satisfies those. There is a, a, a referent for that desire out yeah. there. Um, and, and God satisfies it and fills it. And so I think the good news about eternal life is that that, <clears throat> that longing inside a little yeah. bit. Oh, it, it finds its resolution. Oh, that hunger we have. There was such a thing as food. Yeah. Um, are, are, we're, we're not lying to ourselves. I yeah. think there is something bigger going on. Yeah. And those feelings I have, though, like, well, like I said, I mentioned, like, looking at my wife, like, mm. how can I ever exist, you know? At the same time, I also have moments where, like, I could kick you to the crib tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that's the point. Like, <laughs> like even, like, even, like, what this world provides, like, it's some of the best things. Like, sure, like, they're amazing and they're awesome. But, you know, there's still those moments where, like, the, youth, like, the decay, like, there's still this kind mm. of just, like, unsettling at the same time like we had a small glimpse of it but at the same time there's still this like eh I don't know yeah. about you I don't know about my kids like you know <laughs> like whatever you know whatever it may be but I don't know it's there's just this yeah but to think that someday like you're right like whatever those longings and desires are will be met fully is just I don't know it's really cool it's great yeah to think about. yeah gosh I, I don't know it, I'd love to just as, as we're wrapping kind of up as we've made our way through the creed do you, is there something that's stuck out to you or like what's been um, either a, a favorite little bit or something impressionable as we're kind of making our way back around. Um, I think just as a whole, just the idea of just the unifying element of what the creed provides as a faith. Mm. I love that it's just preserved through history, and yeah. it's just the idea of it tying us back to Christians who were reciting this hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I think that's my favorite part. Just, yeah, just a just a document that's withstood the kind of all the ebbs and flows of what Christianity is. And yeah. It's become honestly, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. I just, I, I, I loved this document after coming to know about it. Again, I, I was part of a tradition that didn't really talk about it mm -hmm. much. And I just loved holding on to something as someone was like, okay, what is Christianity? What, what is this faith about? What does it mean? Um, and trying to wrestle through all these things. It was so helpful to say, Oh wait, you know what? Hey, here is something. Yeah. That, for 2,000 years, the church has kind of just univocally said, and it is good to have something to say, oh, I can latch into this. It connects me to these people in the past. It ties me to the Christian faith in the present. Um, yeah, I just think it's a, a not only a beautiful document, but such a helpful one for Christians today. And I just hope more people discover it, more yeah. people lean into it, more people fall in love with it. Absolutely. And as always, if you have any questions or any feedback about um, the Apostles' Creed, or if you want to include anything or... Um, have one have further discussion. We're always open to that. So you can reach out to us via our website or comment on the video or the reach out, I don't know, somehow via the podcast. If you listen, find a way to get in touch, touch with us. So yeah, 
Thanks again for joining with us. We'll see you next time here on The Current. Thank you.